From its inception in the 80s, the core of the Macintosh experience was the simple, intuitive macOS interface. But over time, the original classic macOS went from delightfully simple to overly simplistic and no longer well suited to modern usage. So in 2001, Apple reinvented the Mac with macOS 10, a revolutionary OS with the unbridled power of Unix just under the surface. Except that this was more of a re-reinvention because Apple had done essentially the same thing way back in 1988 with AUX, which merged the classic macOS and Unix on 68K Macs. And it's one of the best operating systems ever released. So today, let's take a look at AUX on one of the best machines for the task, this maxed out Quadra 700. And then we're actually gonna use it for something incredibly cool. So stay tuned. And if you like Macintosh shenanigans like this, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up because I have some big plans for this beautiful Quadra and I think they're worth sticking around for. And speaking of beautiful, if you saw the last video, you may have noticed that this Quadra is looking a lot more sparkly and beigey. And that's because we've had a few nice hot sunny days here in Philadelphia and I've given this a nice retro bright bath and it came up phenomenally. This case used to be pretty disgusting yellow with big splotches where the stickers used to be, and now you can hardly see them at all. In fact, the only blemish on the front is this unfortunate engraving of numbers that somebody scratched into the surface. But before we install AUX and turn this Jurassic Park Macintosh into a real Unix machine, let's talk a little bit about where AUX came from. When Steve Jobs introduced Macintosh on stage in January 1984, he described its philosophy as radical ease of use, with all of the complications of computing hidden beneath an intuitive point-and-click interface. He often poked fun at DOS and Unix users for having to memorize long strings of cryptic commands to accomplish simple things that a Mac user could do with a simple point, click, drag, and drop. But it turned out that Steve's original vision of the computer as a friendly but sealed appliance took things a bit too far, at least for the time. After Jobs was forced out of Apple in 1985, the company warmed up to customer demands for expandability in the Macintosh. If adding a feature would open up a market, then Apple would open up the Macintosh and add it. And this wasn't limited to hardware features. Back in the 80s and 90s, the US government was America's leading source of Unix nerds. In an effort to ensure that all government systems would be compatible with one another, regardless of vendor, the US began requiring that all computer purchases be POSIX compatible, which is basically a standard that's compatible with Unix software. The story goes that Apple wanted to have its own Unix to tap into massive government contracts as well as to open up the market to huge scientific customers like universities. And thus, AUX was born, and it wasn't just a Unix layer shoehorned into classic macOS. Instead, it was a full-blown, real-deal Unix with macOS running on top of it for software compatibility. And it was genius. It's a full implementation of System 5 Unix fully POSIX compatible, and it can run Unix command line and X Windows software. It ran macOS 6, or later 7, on top of Unix, completely seamlessly. To the user, you could launch and run just about any Mac app or game, just like any other Mac, with the ability to tap into Unix commands and software whenever you need to. But despite the friendly and approachable appearance, it was Unix first and Mac second. In fact, because macOS ran on top of Unix, you didn't need to run it at all. You could run AUX as just X Windows or just the Unix command line if you prefer. And since Unix was running macOS, an errant Mac application wouldn't take down the whole system like it could on a normal classic Mac. The entire macOS was just another process running on top of the Unix system which really couldn't interfere with the other Unix processes and applications. 
All of this earned AUX a dedicated fan base who favored the OS for all sorts of servers. Web servers, mail servers, and, like we're gonna do, even MUD game servers. Unfortunately, AUX didn't succeed in the market, and the project was killed in 1995 with version 3.1.1. And it's this version that we're going to install on our lovely Quadra here, which is going to give us a lovely macOS 7.01 front end with the most stable version of Apple Unix under the hood. Now, one of the requirements for AUX is a CD-ROM drive, and unfortunately, the Quadra 700 only has this single 3.25 inch floppy drive built in, and I don't have an external SCSI CD-ROM, so we're going to have to channel our internal Draga 1. I have borrowed this CD-ROM drive from my otherwise dead LC575, and we're just going to dangle this thing out the top of the... Quadra and use that to install. So we'll just have to take out the original short SCSI cable here, which is absolutely tiny, and we'll temporarily use this long cable with multiple connectors. And this cable isn't keyed, so let me just double check which way it has to go in. There we go. Beautiful. Now, before we dig any deeper into this quadra here, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, my cat Yoshi. Or actually, PCB Way. PCB Way has long been famous for rapid quality PCB prototyping, but did you know that they now offer a comprehensive suite of services including custom CNC machining and high quality 3D printing? It's really great and you can get a quote super fast, and thank you so much PCB Way for being such longtime supporters of the retro computing community. Now, in order to boot the install CD, we have to actually use a boot disk which will boot the system and then search for a compatible CD-ROM drive. And AUX is extremely finicky about what CD-ROM drive it will accept. So using our liberated LC575 drive means that this will definitely work because it's an Apple CD300+. plus. So let's turn this guy on. All right, so we're booted off the floppy. Now we have this kind of unusually polite message saying, I'm sorry, but I can't find a volume which looks like an installation CD. So let's pop our install disk for AUX301 into our reclaimed CD-ROM drive and see if this works. And it found it. So here we are in the AUX installer and I've heard conflicting things about what to choose here. So a lot of people say it's best to go into the custom install and set up your partitions and stuff, but I'm just gonna do the easy install here and then choose software. And let's see what kind of stuff we can put on here. So we definitely want all of the Unix utilities. Networking. Yeah, you know, all the server stuff, programming stuff. It even comes with games, including Fortune, Hangman, and Quiz. Those are Unix games, of course. So yeah, just about everything except for printing and accounting and UUCP and install. And we're going to install right over Mac SD. All right, so it took forever to initialize the disk and partitions, but now it's installing pretty quickly in this kind of very generic looking Mac OS installer. It looks just like every other classic Mac installer. All right, installation is successful, so Let's restart. All right, so here we are booted into our lovely macOS 7.01 front end for AUX 3.01. But before we explore, let's install the 
3.1 update, which shouldn't take that long. And let's just watch this boot process because it's interesting. Right now, it's booting into a minimal system, but it's going to switch right here and boot into AUX because Mac machines cannot natively boot Unix. They have to boot Mac OS first. So this boots a minimal Mac OS and then switches into Unix and then boots Mac OS on top of Unix. And that's just interesting. And here we are booted into AUX 3.1 and really not that difficult of an install. Everything just kind of worked. But before we poke around too much, I just want to take a moment and, uh, well, completely forget everything we just did because it was completely unnecessary. You see, if you're trying to run AUX on your own system and you have a SCSI to SD, there's a way easier solution thanks to some kind folks on the 68K MLA forum who have created a fully complete install of AUX 3.1 on an SD card image that you can simply DD to an eight gig or bigger SD card. And they have everything you could ever want installed and ready on that disc, including all of the ports of the GCC tools, which we're gonna need for our server shenanigans on this machine. And also pretty much every bit of AOX software ever created from the Jagubox mirror, which is on a separate partition on the card. So I've already made up a card with that install on there and we're going to switch to it because it's pretty much the install that we just did, but better. Pretty darn easy with the SCSI to SD. And actually while I'm in here, I'm also going to install this Dana port networking card, which has RJ45 for ethernet, which will be much more convenient than the AAUI port that's built into this quadra for networking, which you can use, but I'd rather just plug an ethernet cable directly into the machine. And I'm pretty sure this will just work in AUX with no configuration needed, but I have been burnt by that assumption before, so I guess we'll find out. All right, so here we are at the login screen on this properly configured install of AUX, and the username and password here is just root and password. Very secure, but like the GitHub instructions say, you probably shouldn't connect this thing to an insecure network. This is a very old and insecure now version of Unix. So the first thing you'll notice here is that we have a pretty bog standard install of macOS 7.01. And it's on our, of course, Quadra 700 here, which we're maxed out at 68 megs of RAM. But when we look at what's running, we have our system software, and then we also have our command shell, which is the Unix system. So the first interesting thing you can do is click into the Apple menu and choose command shell. And this is your link to the underlying Unix system. And one of the things I love about the pre-built SD card here is that they've already configured the bash shell, which is a much more modern shell than the default one that AOX comes with. And we have all of our normal goodies like LS and LS-A, but we don't have any modern conveniences. For example, there's no nano text editor. And for that reason, I've actually moved one of the AUX specific apps to the desktop here, Text Editor, which is a Mac OS program, but it is also a very nice, easy to use and plain text editor. So if we need to edit config files, it's a lot easier to do it in here, at least to me, than it is to use something like VI. And this pre-built SD card also has fun stuff on here, of course, like the After Dark screensaver, because really, what classic Mac is complete without After Dark? 
And even though you're using Unix, you don't have to go without the creature comforts of flying toasters. Or actually my favorite one, Satori. Come on, that is much cooler than flying toasters. And then just for you purists out here, we'll take a look at the flying toasters. Actually, I guess we don't have flying toasters because application has unexpectedly quit because of error type one. <laughs> well, all right, we have some after dark. Some other interesting stuff to note is that we have two disks on the desktop from the SD card here. We have our root Unix file system and that houses all of your normal Unixy stuff, but it also houses a bunch of Mac stuff. For example, applications tend to install here, as we can see right here. So we have all of our Mac applications, but then under Mac partition, this is actually your system. So this is your Macintosh system folder along with some AUX startup goodness. So this is the application that launches AUX from the Mac OS initial startup. So don't mess with this stuff because you will kill your system and you cannot upgrade system 701. If you change out this system folder, stuff will break. Okay, now before we check out some of the other deeper features here, I just wanna run an experiment because my zip drive did not want to work properly with AUX here. So I'm curious what would happen if we just install the extensions from the regular iOmega installer disk. So I've got my iOmegaWare install disk that came with our new inbox SCSI zip drive. Let's see if we can install it. And uh, I guess not. <laughs> bad F-line instruction. But that shows us one major, major benefit of AUX is that even though that said it crashed the whole system and we had to restart, it really just restarted the macOS process on top of AUX and now we can just log in again. It did not bring down the whole computer. It did not kill the Unix processes that are running in the background. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so since we're logged out, I wanna try something else that I'm super interested in seeing. If we go to options and change session type, we can actually change what we're logging into. So we have the AUX finder in 24 and 32 bit, but we also have console emulator and X11. So if we log in as root and password and choose X11, we're gonna boot into, well, what this calls Apple's adaption of the industry standard X window system for AUX. X11 is a pure X environment and no Macintosh compatibility is provided. So we'll choose this session only. And uh, yeah. All right, well, it does not appear that X windows works quite right on this install. I'm not quite sure why, but let's try console and see what this is like with a pure command line interface. All right, that's pretty cool. And yeah, we are in the bash shell and uh, it has this nice little kind of quasi window decoration about it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. We have our LS, we have our LS-A. We can watch system processes on top. No, we can't, we don't have top. All right, so uh, that's fun, but let's exit. Okay, so all the AOX stuff we've seen so far is pretty straightforward, but let's do something now that's unfortunately a little bit more complicated, and that's set up networking. So if we try to do it like we would on a regular Mac, we go into control panels and then Mac TCP. We'll find that this is actually read only. We cannot make actual changes in here. 
And that's because we have to set up networking on the Unix side and the Mac side goes through the Unix side of AUX to get out to the network. So using our text editor, we just have to edit a few config files. Okay, so forget all that stuff I said about finding the right config file to put our IP address in. It's actually a lot easier than that, thanks to a little script called new config, which is kind of a wizard from the Apple developers back in the 80s to set up networking, at least most of the way, in AUX. Okay, so after it builds the kernel, and uh, it's not joking about taking several minutes, it starts to ask us a bunch of questions about our network interface. So it found one ethernet card installed. So actually I don't think that new bus card is working. I think it's only detecting the built-in ethernet, but we'll say, yes, we'll configure this interface for IP. And then for internet address, I'll just put what I want this quadra to be on my home network here. Enter a net mask. And uh, yeah, all right, well, it's actually it turns out it did see both ethernet cards. The only thing is I don't know which is which, so it sees AE0, and that's the one I've configured for my network here, and then it sees AO0, and that one's still configured with the original settings that this SD card install came with. Why don't we, Reboot the system. I'm going to plug in the Ethernet cable to one of those cards. We'll see if it works, and if it doesn't, I'll plug it into the other. Okay, so I've removed our haphazard CD-ROM drive, and I've buttoned the Quadra back up, and I have the Ethernet cable plugged into the built-in Ethernet, so let's try a ping and see if we can talk to the outside world. It does not appear so. All right, let me plug Ethernet into the Ethernet card and see if that one works. Okay, so networking is really fighting me on this. So I think what I'm going to do is take out that Ethernet card and reconfigure with new config, but we'll come back to that later. For now, let's check out some of the other software that comes on this pre-configured SD card install. So the main thing I'm interested in is under user local, and we have all of our GNU utilities, including GCC to compile software, grep, less, all sorts of stuff. And then if we add this stuff to our path, we then have access to GCC, and we can compile software, including the circle mud that we're going to run live from Vintage Computer Festival East this year in October. And that's the grand plan that I have for this Quadra. We're gonna use it as a server for our display, which is gonna be most likely me and Steve from Mac84. And we're gonna have a bunch of computers set up as clients to play the MUD. And the MUD server is this fella right here. So I'm going to configure the environment a little bit more and get all the files and stuff, circle mud, source code, and everything on here. And we'll see more about that in upcoming videos because I'm going to actually configure this so I can do the development on this machine using my PowerBook 1400C, which is now lovingly upgraded to a G3. Okay, so I took the new bus networking card out and we only have the built-in networking of the Quadra now, and I have the Ethernet cable plugged in, I reran new config, and it gave me the 192 addresses again, and my network, of course, is 10 dot, so I ran if config, and it's AO0, which is the built-in network adapter, and I gave it the address 10.0.0.77, and told it to broadcast at 10.0.0.255 and set it to up. And now we should be on our network. So, yep, I can ping my router at 10.0.0.1 and we are now connected. After 
all of that nonsense. So now I want to try something really cool. So this is my M1 MacBook Pro, and I should be able to telnet into the Quadra. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. How cool is that? Apple Computer AUX. All right, so log in as root here. VT100, <laughs> yeah, welcome to AUX here on my MacBook Pro, my modern computer. I can now work on my stuff on the Quadra from the couch using any computer, including my M1 MacBook Pro, or I can use my PowerBook 1400C, which has Wi-Fi. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is pretty awesome. Okay, so that'll do it for these Unixy Macintosh shenanigans. And I'm really excited for this machine being set up like this and AUX is, well, mostly working. I don't know why that other networking card gave us so much trouble, but the built-in ethernet works just fine. And uh, yeah, this is now on my home network and I can connect to it remotely, which means I can start working on the MUD server, which is what I'm so excited about with this machine. And I hope you'll be at VCF East this year because I'll be there and Steve from Acadie 4 should be there. We'll have a table together where this machine will be set up and many of the other Macs that you'll have seen on this channel will be there. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Unixy Macintosh shenanigans, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Stig124, Justin, Greg, Chris, and Sorta Eclectic, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these shenanigans possible.